Welcome everybody, PTR TV here on a Monday night, and it's been a while, but we are given another racer's mind. We're on episode number nine, and you'll notice to the person to my left, it is not Brandon Kreutz, who it usually is, Kyle Hare from uh, Sim TV, a channel that we work with and talk to quite a bit. So Kyle, welcome, and how are you? Thanks, uh, Corey. It's, uh, this is exciting. I've been waiting, looking forward to this one. Uh, obviously, this is an issue I'm quite passionate about, uh, probably to a negative, but I'm excited for it tonight. Yeah, I mean, I know myself. I've been in the forums on this. Um, again, I'm an OG iRacing member. I've had many a post. I've had uh, staff actually talk to me about it. And I know, Kyle, you're on the rampage of it as well. Uh, <laughs> some people will call it a rampage based on what we've done in the past week or so, but... As I've titled it, I call it The Content Dilemma. So, uh, before we divulge into it, um, obviously, Corey Sylvie, you know me, PTR TV. Uh, we're a little light on the broadcast now, but we're working on that. We uh, just did a whole bunch of stuff prepping for the 2019 season, and uh, we'll be picking up some slack on the eSports network doing some stuff, so we're excited about that. And uh, just again, Kyle, it's a little introduction for you guys, because I know you have a lot of big things going on. Uh, how can the viewers find about you, and uh, what are you guys up to? Well, uh, you can find us at uh, youtube.com slash simtvbroadcasting, and uh, on Facebook is at simtvbroadcasting, and our website, simtvbroadcasting.com, there's a lot of simtv broadcasting there. But uh, next Wednesday, we are streaming the Spec MX-5 Sim Racing Championship on the Winding Road Magazine YouTube channel to 450,000 subscribers. Uh, so that's really exciting. We have Grid Life working with us now, as well as the Washington, D.C. region SECA. So we got all sorts of good stuff and recurring groups that we've been working with forever, like Fuel and uh, Scars and all that good stuff coming up. So there's going to be a point in March, I think we're doing six or seven broadcasts a week. So it's just going to be a grind for the, at least the first half of 2019. Yeah, and I know, uh, I, mean, I think safely saying, 450,000 subscribers you guys are going to be broadcasting on. That is, I, mean, I don't even have to ask, that is the biggest platform iRacing has been streamed on. Yet, I think that even beats uh, the NASCAR Facebook page and stuff like that. So, I know you guys must be having a lot of nerves and kind of wondering how much of that actually is going to turn out to watch sim racing and how they will accept it. Uh, and then, obviously, you guys, how, how you guys will bring it to them. Right. Well, I think uh, actually the first week they're running next week is at Virginia International Raceway, which is one of the tracks that will fit perfectly into this discussion tonight, <laughs> yes. I think. So again, the discussion. And um, where, uh, Kyle, I know you're newer to, not newer to iRacing, but I mean, I've been here since day one, so a little just kind of too long, didn't read version is iRacing, again, and I want to preface this because this may come off on the negative end, and if anybody watching, if the music's too loud, let me know. Um, I always, I like having a little bit, but if it's too loud, let me know. Um, everyone knows iRacing loves detail. We've had our laser scan tracks. Uh, iRacing started, uh, I think, 06, 07, after they took the rights away from NR 2003, that they shut that down. All the monitors got shut down because iRacing got the rights to it and was going to use that base code to start iRacing, which they did at... Uh, I think the, they started 06, the betas in 07, they opened to the public in 08, that's when I joined. I joined about a month before the open beta. But when they opened, the open beta came out, there was already, I mean, you're going to make me go back 12 years now, there was already at least 10 or 12 tracks uh, in the service at that point. Um, I know Daytona 07, South Boston, Lanier, Laguna Seca. Um, I want to say VIR was in there in the OG status, I call it, uh, Summit Point, Watkins Glen, um, and there was a couple that came soon out after opening, like Sonoma, Barber, um, stuff like that. But the moral of the story is this is all dating back 10, 12 years at this point, so if the tracks came out in 08, we know the time scale of iRacing. So those tracks were scanned 05, well maybe not 05, I mean they might be for Atlanta as well. Uh, 06, 07, a lot of scanning got done. And then the track boom started off in the beginning. Uh, all the NASCAR stuff, 2008, 2009, 2010, they, try, they got the majority of the NASCAR calendar filled out by 2010. There was a couple late bloomers in there, Auto Club, Kansas, they came 2012, 2013 with some scanning issues. but. The bread and butter of iRacing came in two, before 2010. Obviously, we know 
Norch Life, Lama, Emila. Those high detail tracks have taken time, dirt. But the bread and butter what we're going to be talking about is NASCAR. Um, and all that stuff came out in 2008, 2010. And just think in the video game world, even. 2008, Kyle, what, what were we on for platforms back then? Uh, oh, Xbox, P PS3, PS no, PS4, PS no, 3. No, I think we were probably on the, the beginning of PS3, trailing edge of PS2. I mean, that's it's a long time. I was 10 years old. I'm a junior in college now. Yeah, so, so we're going, so think of that. And, th and that just kind of leads again to the iteration of the point that iRacing is in kind of a, um, a position right now that no other title has ever been in. No other title has ever been in a single iteration and then lasted in that same iteration and continued development of it for so long so think of it we're still we're touting these tracks vir uh sonoma uh i mean the ovals like las vegas uh i know i forgot that one uh let's see bristol's even in there as well atlanta martinsville these are the tracks that if you're just starting on the service Let's say I'm watching because of all the $100,000 peak anti-freeze esports series. If I'm just, oh, hey, look at this. I'm going to sign up for iRacing. You know, all the people in chat that they don't know what iRacing is. This is all new to them. They're signing up for it. Oh, NASCAR is at Atlanta next week. Oh, I got to go buy that because I want it. You load up Atlanta. It's not even, well, I mean, it's the same configuration and it's the same name. But that's about as far as it is. It has changed so much in 10 years 12 years, 13 years, but you still have that same $14.95 price tag as a track that just came out yesterday. Yeah, I think, uh, and before I go anywhere with this, I need to preface one thing. iRacing is my sim of choice. It always has been, it always will be. Um, and I'm a huge iRacing fanboy. And everything I'm gonna say from this point on is out of love for iRacing only. Um, and because obviously, like you said, this can come off kind of negative. So let's just get that out of the yes, way. Yes, I'll reiterate um, it for myself as well. Uh, but Corey, you bring up a great point about, you know, the majority of the bread and butter of the NASCAR tracks are ancient. And in all honesty, there are some that that are old, but can probably suffice and people won't notice that much. Um, but there are definitely ones that are more glaring than others. And there becomes a point that when you mentioned the price tag, in iRacing, when you go to buy a $15 track, the, the difference in quality you get is enormous. There's no continuity between, you know, buying Virginia International Raceway or Atlanta and going out and buying Auto Club or the new Michigan or Pocono. I mean, it, there's such a massive range and it's an inconsistent product, I feel, um, that kind of needs to be addressed because we're cranking out new tracks and new cars all the time, which is awesome. But at the same time, we've grown that track list so much that it's becoming, it, it, there's no time for iRacing to go back and visit the older stuff that is desperately out of date. And so the difference is only growing as they get more and yeah. more advanced, the other tracks fall farther and farther behind. An analogy I came up with, uh, and there's going to be a bunch of analogies because I love analogies, is you buy Madden 19. So the Super Bowl just happened. So let's just say you're emulating the Super Bowl, Patriots. And you go out to uh, Mercedes-Benz Field, and it's Madden 19. It's PS4, PS4 Pro, Xbox One X. It looks phenomenal in every regard. Kudos to EA Sports. You guys absolutely nailed it. So then let's go to Heinz Field for the Steelers. I think that's where they still play. I don't know. But let's say you go there. And magically, just without any explanation whatsoever, Madden loads up the Madden 09 version of Heinz Field. And you're playing on a PS3 era rendered stadium. You didn't know. You're like, what is this? It still says Madden 19 all over the pause screen, all over the graphics. It's Madden 19. But why are you magically playing in a game that in the rendered version from over 10 years ago? You didn't know. You just bought the game expecting it to be what it should be. And then you're stuck with this. Right. That's not fair. If you, There needs to be, I mean, at the root of the issue... There needs to be an explanation uh, somewhere in the track, in the track page, in the track uh, uh, cart page, whatever, what you're getting. Because a viewer, and especially with the, the new stuff like Texas, Kentucky, 
you you're going to have viewers going out there. Uh, brand new people going out there buying Kentucky. It says Kentucky Speedway. Yay, I'm racing Kentucky. Wait, this isn't Kentucky. Well, it is, but why is it this? It should be this. There's it, there's no way to know it. In a way, it's almost false advertising. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so that's a good point there. I will say that obviously we're we're all quite aware that the track building process is a lot more involved than say building an EA Sports stadium. So there, you know, there go, a lot more time goes into them, and uh, that's we're very aware of that. I think the problem is is that that that's actually the problem in itself is that they take so long to do. Um, but you know, that's if you're building from scratch. We've seen in the past iRacing graphically redo tracks and update the shaders at the very least. I mean, I think the very least that someone could expect is that visually, graphically, texturally, uh, the track is somewhat comparable to the modern stuff. I, I'm not going to expect that iRacing has every NASCAR track within five years of age completely scanned as, you know, that new, everything updated down to the T, but I think there's a reasonable expectation that some of the tracks that have had larger changes, Texas, Kentucky, Pocono, Michigan, they've done, so we'll, we'll give them yeah. a pass on that. Um, those tracks that have had changes like that should get priority over, you know, some of the other tracks that we don't aren't necessarily as big or as important yeah, that like, are new. Like right? think of Concord Speedway. Who I mean, with all respect, it's a fun track. It's a very unique track. And all respect, who cares? It's Concord. It's right. it's 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 a dead track. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, this is one of the few places I haven't been to. I'm pretty sure there's a Nextel sign at Concord Speedway, if that's yeah. any reference. But again, yeah. that's a track that, as you said, we could pass on. I just got a comment in. Um, uh, it goes to my Madden reference. And it's, again, a lot of what I'm going to say with the graphics I'm going to pull up is not. Don't take it surface level. If you take it surface level, you're not getting the point. The point is what the end product is and what the especially what the new viewer is going to see. When you buy an iRacing track, when you load into an iRacing track, especially as I said, as a new viewer, you expect, if especially as a brand new NASCAR fan, let's say you're a NASCAR Heat 3 convert, and yeah, everyone, it's NASCAR Heat 3, well look at something. Watch the Daytona 500 yesterday. There was a NASCAR Heat sticker on almost every single car in that field, and why is it? Because NASCAR Heat is an eSport, a huge, has a huge eSport thing. And yes, I get it. NASCAR Heat is a game. It's not a sim. It doesn't try to be a sim. But one thing NASCAR Heat does that NASCAR likes better, I'm sure, than iRacing, is that that is something they can present and know that it is accurate. Is it accurate in terms of 3D geometry and physics? No. But if Parker Kligerman wanted to boot up NASCAR Heat 3 at Kentucky and play with Jeff Burton, for a lap around Kentucky, the viewer is going to see that Kentucky and they're going to watch the race and say, hey, that's the same Kentucky. Yeah, I, I think, you know, that that's a, a good a, a good thing to, to, to note there. Um, I will say also that I, I, I posted in the forums about this as well just today, and I posted in the past about the same issue, about one specific track that we'll get to later. But um, it's not... It's not just from the driver's perspective that we're concerning this. Obviously, iRacing, you know, for the members, I think they're mostly concerned about what they see from the cockpit, which isn't, you know, in some of the tracks, they're a little bit outdated in terms of the geometry outside the track and the surrounding areas. That's, you know, that's okay if you're just watching the sim from inside the cockpit. The reality is, is that iRacing is trying to push more into the eSport arena with the Peak Any Free series becoming so huge and having so much money on the line going out to so many people and when they see Daytona and it's missing safer barriers that have been there for five years now that's a problem and it's going to reflect negatively on what everyone says is the most realistic sim out there when you know the, the safer barriers don't require a rescan to be put in there in the first place they're a, a commonly known uh, construction so they're all it's all uh, already pre-known all the dimensions of the safer yep. barrier so you can apply those to any track without having to go and rescan the only the thing that they have to do and this may be part of it is i know they use i think it's i don't know the exact word but they basically they'll take a picture of a wall graphic and they interpolate that image onto their texture of a safer barrier so that it looks as authentic as possible so they would have to do a little manual work there and make sure they get the graphic right because they're not going to have the image of the graphic. They'd either have to go outsource it, get it, uh, but 
there's that but as you said the 3d that is a that is a universal item if you will as you said that could just be an, i mean go to homestead you could just make it blue go to right. you know go to richmond or go to darlington you can make it red red and white i mean so all right what else we got we got psi tv in here yes and that, that's a very good point there needs to be a level of concern to someone outside of the service and the generic, before I get into uh, the graphics, uh, the visuals that I'm going to pull up on the screen. Um, oh my god, I just lost my train of thought. And, and, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, it just it turns into what we're seeing for the end viewer. And before I pull into the graphics, you just have to think about it in this regard. If you're racing, and I pulled this up, and I think I can actually pull this up. I pulled up, um, I made a couple posts in the forums the other day. And I think they are very relevant to this. And it's about the safer barrier. It's not about the safer barrier, Kyle. And Kyle right. will admit it. It's not the yeah. safer barrier specifically. It's not that this billboard is not accurate. And, and screw it. I'll just get off. I'll get off topic right now. It's about these things are landmarks that show how old an item is. And right. when you bring this stuff up to the forums, here's my point. When you bring something up to the forums... Well, why would they do this when we don't have Barcelona and we don't have, uh, I don't know, we don't have this yeah. F1 track and there's no tracks and we need more Aussie tracks. So when you guys, as generic members, and when this problem is addressed, you're helping iRacing. And I get it. It's not profit. I mean, yeah, they charge a little bit. They're still probably making losing money on these, but you have to keep your stuff relevant uh, well it, it, interesting you mentioned the daytona thing because that was an interesting one for me because as we're talking about updating tracks there is there was news that daytona is getting an update to the sim and this this is a problem in the way that they're doing it for me and it, it's it's a little bit bigger than a small problem they've updated the grandstands which is fantastic do that you don't have to go rescan the place to do that. So go for it. You know, update the grandstands. Uh, you know, will anybody tell that the surface is from 2011? Probably not. It hasn't really aged all that much. The problem I have is that the surface texture of the asphalt and the safer barrier and all the other objects weren't changed. So now we have a mismatch of eras. We have 2011 racetrack with 2017 grandstands. So that's even more incorrect than just having an old version of Daytona. So now it seems like almost, they, I know, and there were, they had pressure from Daytona and NASCAR to push this out, so I get that. But I, I, as long as there's an expectation to get it corrected at some point, I think that needs to be something that's important because so, we can't have mismatched eras. So what is ultimately, and I'll ask you as your opinion, and um, what should be the advertisement for iRacing, especially if we're going to go the route of, and I'm not saying it's wrong, I get it. I mean, a track could take three months, it could take six months, it could take a year, it could take two years if it's a Norwich Life. I get it. And iRacing's not making as much money, they're stopping people off of other projects, to, to off of new tracks, off of, uh, you know, other just graphical updates generically to do these. I get it. But at what point if we're gonna do the pick and choose, we're gonna update this, we're gonna leave this the same, what should be the level of authenticity that we are advertising? Because if we're going to nitpick and, all right, we're gonna leave the safer barrier the same, this building's fine, this one will update, eh, that one, whatever, no one will notice it. This one will totally redo. And the surface, eh, we'll leave that, that's fine. If we're gonna nitpick and choose what we're updating, and as you said, mismatch of errors, which I really love that exact quote, what should be the advertisement? Yeah, I, I think, again, I actually did, I mentioned right before we started this, that I had a long conversation with Drew Adamson last night about um, the Daytona thing specifically. Um, and really, it, it, it comes down to, you know, it's they, they, all of these are art projects. And one thing that I learned last night that I don't think a lot of people know is that most of the artists that work at iRacing are not based at I, the iRacing HQ in Bedford, Massachusetts. They're all over the country which they work remotely, which I did not know that. Um, so, you know, the problem is, is that you have almost a disjoint between, you know, a team of people working together to output things. And then what's actually going on, which is there's a lot of individual people all over the country that are working on separate projects. So, there, uh, you know, that's kind of a problem. And it's also, I mean, 
I'm, I'm trying to think of where I want to go with this, is that the mismatch of eras thing is becoming an issue because they are trying to update things at the rate that they can without pulling away time from new projects. Because they don't have the effort or the, the ability to put all the effort into updating the old stuff. So, you know, when you look at a, something like Assetto Corsa, for example, a lot of the tracks there are scanned either with LiDAR, they're laser scanned, or they're just not scanned at all. That's not accurate, but you know, laser scanning isn't accurate if the track's been repaved for 15 years, <laughs> and it really just becomes a time capsule, which is okay. It's okay. To an extent. To an extent. So, you know, the thing is, is we don't want the entire sim to become a time capsule, because we obviously know there's a lot of people out there that look at iRacing as outdated, you know, as having poor graphics, and I think a lot of it stems from the content being ancient and not getting looked after. Yeah, and, um... Where is it right here? I am going to pull up. Hopefully it works the way I want it to and it doesn't, but we're going to fix it on the fly because uh, we have the technology to do so. Um, there it is. Uh, fix this. I know I tested this about five times and it worked until I actually needed it to work. Would you believe that? <laughs> yes. All right. So top of the screen here. Um, my post. To reiterate, I'm an OG member since 2008. I'm not going anywhere. iRacing is a huge part of my daily interactions, and I met a ton of great people, including the guy I'm talking to right now. It's not a sim or a game. It's honestly a lifestyle long term. Given that, I've seen a whole lot of development since day one. I know there are a whole bunch of people in the community with the same mindset. Empty Box being one. I tried getting him on here. He's a busy guy. Um, all have a great passion. We want what's best for iRacing and its longevity. Here's where I get a little bit blunt. When you drive on the same bleeping version of a track in 2019 that you drove on in 2008, literally the same with the exception of a monster billboard, that's not a matter of priorities versus profits. That's a fundamental issue in keeping with the times. And then my second post directly after that was if Martinsville, and I'm gonna re reference these next, if Martinsville got a texture update similar to what Daytona got, on its 13 year old scan is that a yay because it looks more up to date or a well what the hell the track's already 13 years old why not just rebuild it kyle and i are on the side of one just rebuild it at that point but to each their own if you say option two of hey it's okay just to update this stuff here and there you're candy coating a basic business model and development system issue that's showing its flaws yeah i definitely agree with that and like i said before there are some tracks that are old that aren't in dire need of a rescan necessarily but could just and not even you know it's it's not a, i don't think there's a massive inventory of tracks that is in desperate need of a scan i think there is a small group of tracks that really do need a scan and a whole lot of tracks that could just use at least new textures and some new modeling um because i think the real is the realistic way to look at this is that there's no way for iRacing to keep up with yeah, the rate that they've established. We, we are in, we're in, and right, if I'm going to bring these up now before I forget. I, I don't, so I'm calling these timestamp graphics. And are these amazing images that are going to divulge much? No, but they will show you what you need to see. This is Darlington. Uh, I know, Kyle, you're waiting on a YouTube delay. It's Darlington. We are at the inside pit wall about turn one, looking at the start finish line. So what do I see right here? First thing I'm looking at is generic white walls, which the Darlington, I, someone will probably correct me. I want to say they started the retro walls in 2009, maybe 2010, somewhere yeah, in that time frame. Right. Yeah, yeah. So Darlington on the press box is currently in Darlington, and I don't have side-by-sides for this. I tried. I could not get the images that I wanted. Darlington is in retro font. Dodge Challenger 500, the last Dodge Challenger 500 was in 2008. Oh man! So again, timestamp graphics is is the root issue these specific things? Yes and no. But the concept is these by far, and Darlington's one of the biggest ones. They show to somebody who's loading into Darlington on retro set retro Sunday night for the late for the Southern Five Hundred. Well, why is this here? Is it? It's a, it's a, it's a timestamp. Next. Right. Uh, well, I didn't even know what orders these were in. Kentucky Speedway. So I, I'm presented with two things here. A, I can see the old Kentucky Speedway, because obviously we know there's the reconfig, not just the repeat, the repave, the entire reconfiguration. And uh, I'm still waiting for it to change on your end, Kyle. Yeah. But there's a, <laughs> um, 
I specifically, and you can't really see it textually here, but you can see it in terms of when I show it, when I tell you, this is where the crossover, crossover tunnel is in the infield. You'll see it says Quaker State 400, but there's a little banner on top of it. And if I knew how to zoom in on OBS, oh, I would. Yeah. But I that see what says, you're looking at. But that says inaugural Quaker State 400. The inaugural Quaker State 400 was in 2011, leading that this scan was late 2010, early 2011. So we're eight years old on top of a repave old. And yeah. I believe it's either Kentucky or Texas that's in the schedule for peak this season. Both are over eight years old both are out of date configurations just throw that out there next this is my favorite one of all time kyle i already showed you this one it's of martinsville so this is martinsville obviously i mean martinsville we don't have the lights those just came in 2016 so even with day and night we it's not like a homestead or vegas the lights physically do not work at those tracks we don't have the lights so obviously they can't work they haven't been rendered in because we're on a 13 year old scan and if you look on the scoring tower, A, it's not the 3D rendered, it's not the 3D LED one that they have now in real life. It is the old five person, just, you know, gym class scoreboard. And again, is this the root issue? No. You can see the little iRacing thing on top of it, which, you know, that's that was added in. But the best part, and you might be able to see this if you have high enough resolution, NASCAR Bush Series returns July 22nd. So again, timestamp graphics. The Bush Series, for those who don't know, the Bush Series was before Nationwide, which was before Xfinity, depending how young you are. Bush Series ended in 2007. They raced one race at Martinsville Speedway. That was in 2006. So that would lead you to believe late 2005, early 2006, the scan was done. Yes, yeah, so that's got to be one of the oldest tracks then, because yeah. that, that's, that surprised me, because Martinsville is one of those tracks that doesn't really to me look all that bad but that's interesting to note how old this one yeah, really I'll is give you, and like i said i'll give credit on that it's not as bad as other tracks by all by far but I, like you said this dates it automatically this dates it back to early 2006 if not earlier than that right next i think i have two more so this is uh this is this is talladega and i can't get as much detail into this because the the gods of talladega didn't put the logos where i wanted them but the first thing you could see on the left, Amp Energy 500, the last Amp Energy 500 was 2008. Uh, there are old Pepsi logos. Pepsi changed their logo in about 2009. But then you can't see it, but you know it's there. And this is mismatch of eras and con con conflict of interest, really. We have the Amp Energy 500, and we also have Monster Energy NASCAR Cup logos all over the track. Yeah, I think that's that's another issue too, I mean, when you have sponsors that not only are out of date, but conflict with other sponsors at the track because some have been updated and some have not. That's what I'm talking about with the whole Daytona issue um, is if you're going to update a track graphically, you should just update it graphically. Um, and if you're going to leave it, just leave it. I mean, I, th I think kind of doing it half half in, half out really is going to make it even worse. I think this may be the last one of this playlist. Uh, racing line, just, uh, we're not doing any uh, kind of call-ins in this, if you will. So whatever you have to say, just put it on chat. We will... Uh get to it as we can but this is my favorite one of all thanks dale at las vegas is a big banner on the back straightaway thanks dale it's been a great ride dale jarrett retired in 2008 so that again this dates it back to probably mid 2007 uh, and then oh ah, this is actually man. daytona so this i know this is getting updated but this goes back to mismatches of eric's uh, kyle at the current daytona we have right now in the pit road, there's a building, and it says home of the Pepsi 400. Pepsi 400, uh, the last Pepsi 400 was 2007. But this was the new Daytona. This Daytona got redone in 2011, 2012. This was a carryover building that was left over. Again, timestamp graphic. We left something and it ages the track even further than that. Cause this is supposed to be the new version and it was already for four years before this, it was the Coke 400. Yeah. And, and actually one of the things I talked with Drew last night was, um, you know, about, you know, textural upgrades and things. And, and one of the things he told me when, when we were, he was talking about how it takes tracks so long to get made, he said that the artists are perfectionists. And I, I'll go, okay, I mean, I, I can see that on the newer stuff, but look back at, th this is a perfect example. It, I, I know the artists have a lot to do, and they're very, very busy people. However, 
Um, you know, this is the kind of inaccuracy that, that drives detail-oriented people crazy. And if you're not a detail-oriented person and on iRacing, you could probably save yourself a couple bucks, honestly, because iRacing is for detail-oriented people. That's, I mean, otherwise we wouldn't laser scan it, yeah. right? So th this is the kind of thing that drives people like me crazy because it's just, I mean, it's just wrong. And this, I've tried making the graphic and I'm not happy with how it came out. So just, they're small, but they'll kind of show you a little bit right here. Here's Homestead. Uh, it's a then and now. Uh, work, damn you. There it goes. So it's an overhead shot. And I, I didn't have a, a replay save with race graphics, but you can see just overall the pavement is a lot different colored. The front straightaway at the new version, at the updated real life homestead, all blue with Ford. We don't have that. We have grass everywhere. There's grass on the back straightaway. And you can just see, look to the right of the screen behind the grandstands is the buildings there in real life. But look, it's just flat, just Google Earth scenery. And that's the stuff. Yeah, you don't see that driving. I get it. But we're broadcasters and all it takes is one scenic cam for you to go around and you'll see this stuff. Yeah, and, and again, this really comes back to iRacing's pushing the esports thing. They're going out to a huge audience and this does not help. Uh, when prospective members see this kind of thing because they're going to notice and you know you get thousands of people watching your broadcasts on race spot or whatever and they're going to notice these things and it's going to reflect very negatively on the sim when they're trying to come across as the super high-end super accurate and honestly there is an expectation that it has to test to be high-end because we pay way yeah, more 15 dollars a track on top and, and of the subscription uh, the subscription is exactly my point we pay uh, monthly for the progression of the sim and that is not only the online service but also an expectation to keep everything reasonably up to date i mean i think that our money should go should i want it to go to that purpose and then the final of this is atlanta and you can see uh, a the pavement i mean we know atlanta is the oldest pavement out there you can see how much lighter it is um yeah, chip Weil with daytona specifically said if you heard the 2017 peak broadcast he said Oh, you guys don't have the new Daytona Rising project. He paused and said, that's okay. It brings me back to my the old days of Daytona. Was that really okay that he just spent $400 million on the biggest sim racing broadcast of the year? And his pride and joy, his baby that he just spent all that money on, it's not reflected. And again, same thing this year. He was on it this year. He didn't say it. And I know I recently had the optimization issue. They couldn't get it out in time. I get that. But it's just, it's still the basic principle. Well, yeah. and the other thing, sorry to cut you off there, Corey. One of the things I wanted to mention also before people get too up, up in arms about what I just said about the subscription thing. When you buy a track for $15, you do not own the track. It is not a, it is not a purchase. Oh, it's a one-time purchase for you. But it's it's a license because if iRacing were to disappear tomorrow, you don't get to keep that track. So there is with that comes an expectation that if we're going to license ourselves by paying this price, license a track that that is a fifteen dollars that is for Atlanta Motor Speedway, and it's uh, you know I think a lot of new members aren't thinking it's going to be two thousand and seven Atlanta Motor Speedway. They're going to think it's Atlanta Motor Speedway you know, as current as they can keep it. So it's not only the subscription, but also the recurring costs of, you know, when you buy this track 10 years down the line, there, I think there's an expectation that it should be a newer version of the track. I think that not only is it the subscription that we're paying for, but also the price of the track. So I just had to throw that out yeah. there as well for the payment. And then just quickly to wrap up this segment on Atlanta, you can see the pavement, you can see the red, white, blue. We don't have that. That's been out there for about four or five years. All the graphic textures in the infield, we don't have and the uh the grandstand and three and four still there that we don't have and again timestamps. these are just the things that show the age of the content so um and, and actually another thing about that i mean, we probably just switched but one of the things i noticed about the um the skies is that the skies look incredible now after the day to night yeah. transition update they look amazing and it makes the rest of the place just look just old. i mean it gives it a little like uh, that's the word i'm looking for almost a uh, a fake facelift if you will but Again, that's it's not the intent of it to do that. It's just kind right. of a, a result of it. But um, all right. So before we get to uh, the piece de resistance of this, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, ISM Raceway. That's a good point, and that's something that, again, if we're we have the laser scan surface, albeit really old. So if iRacing wants to keep with the laser scan method. 
and say everything is 100% laser scan. We can't do this half-ass. I don't, I don't want to say half-ass because they're putting a lot of time and effort into these renderings. I'll, I mean, anybody who's done, I haven't, but I know people that have doing 3D renderings, 3D modeling, stuff like that, especially to this kind of detail. I don't want to touch that. That's uh, that three. I don't want to know how much work went into that grandstand at Daytona. And I'm very curious to go through all the aisles and look for concession stand signs because that's what I like to do. So I don't want to know how much time was into that because I know it's a ton. But if we're going to go the route of this, why can't we just do ISM Raceway on pure artwork and reference graphics alone? If we're well, going to keep the surface alone, if we're just going to tout that yeah. we have laser scan surfaces, of the era of the time yeah. uh, why don't we just say well screw it we're not going to worry about specific laser scan scenery we'll just do it on reference data they can do phoenix in a relative time frame yeah and, and that's the thing is as i actually and some some people that are a little bit more hardcore than me which is going to be hard to find might say <laughs> okay everything needs to be laser scanned every time you update the track it's got to be redone completely ISM it was scanned in 2012 after the repave. I, I could 100% live with that surface being around for a little while. And I would be okay with changing around the grandstands around it, just because in reality it really hasn't changed that much. The problem is when you have something like Daytona where the safer barrier has changed and logos have changed, that, that stuff needs to get updated as well. Um, but again, uh, the, the ISM Raceway, I could live with that and, scan and being all respect, that age. though. I mean, the only thing with that, Kyle, that I want to bring up, and well, first off, safer barriers, that's going to be a thing everywhere. Back in the era, 05, yeah. 06, 07, 08, it was in the corners, maybe the inside walls. Now every track is pretty much, the entire perimeter is, is uh, done. But the thing with yeah. what you're saying, and I want to just get a little clarification on that, what we don't want to do, and you know, in any regard, whether you're a business owner, whether you're a manager or whatever, you never want to do anything conditionally. You kind of always want to have a rhyme or reason to something. So my only problem with that is then they're going and they're picking and choosing. Eh, I guess that one can, that one's okay. I yeah. kind of should have a, we're going to do it this way. And this is our mentality. Cause then you're going to have the person who says, well, why are you saying this is okay? This one's not, this one's horrible. You're going to let this one pass, but that one got it. Right. Yeah. That, that's a fair point too. So I can definitely see the other side of that. Um, so again, there's, there's definitely some kind of, middle ground to meet somewhere um, on on this kind of thing because obviously they could sit down and spend five years redoing everything that they've done up to this point and then by the time they're done with that another yeah. bunch of tracks are going to change so it's going to be they're going to be chasing tails no matter what method they use I think and something that I I know Tony Gardner actually came about about this because someone was it was it came up with Long Beach and someone just said Tony why don't you guys do it every other top tier title does and outsource your graphics to a third party company to say, all right, here is the track data. Here is Long Beach. Here is every building and photography of it in the Long Beach area. Make it, let us know when you're done. Here's your check. And he said to get them up to speed on the way iRacing does it, it's actually more of a loss and in investment because you're just, the, the time you spend for the quality you get, they don't like it. They don't want to go that route. But I almost feel like they kind of, if they did that, even community, you know how much of the community would do it for free? If they just iRacing set up a private group of people who are really, really good with graphics and said, guys, this is what we're looking for. Here's a lot of reference data. If you feel comfortable doing this, uh, do it, submit it to us. We'll give it a quality check and blah, 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 blah. I know they don't want to go that route. I can understand the concerns of it, but you know, a lot of people would, would go for it. Yeah, that's a fair point, and I think some people would say, well, iRacing's got to keep it, you know, if it's the same team, it's more consistent, yada, yada, yada. But we have seen, and again, this is this is going to be a controversial hot take here, we have seen in other sims and in other games, look at Enter 2003, for example. This is that's, That game is, what is it, 16, 17 years old now? That's so yeah. old. But the content creators that, that are so passionate about that game still make content, They've added literally day to night for Enter 2003. Yeah. They did that. That was a thing that happened. There's up, there's more up to date, and again, they're not laser scanned, but they're up to date versions and of the, all the new tracks. And honestly, you could update Enter 2003 to where you could have all the new configurations of every track, more so than iRacing would. So, and that's just community based. So is that? And before, uh, after this, we'll, we'll get to the Peace Day Resistance. 
And this is something that honestly, it applies more not to just, and first off, everything that we're saying to can apply to cars as well. On I, we haven't really got into yeah. that, but it applies yeah, to cars. That's actually a good, a good point. I, I do think that it, it, I think people in general will gravitate towards new cars and the old ones will just kind of silently go away. And, and I think the problem was tracks don't silently go away because, you know, every schedule uses something at some point. Um, so, you know, the Pontiac Solstice, for example, it, it, yeah. it's a rookie car. It's a free car, but nobody really races it anymore. And the people that do, I don't I don't really think they're clamoring for the Solstice to get redone. I think it's it's more applicable to tracks. But yeah, you're right to like, some think cars of well. the the original late model asphalt, yeah. the super late model, the touring modified. That's those are all, I mean, I know they said even the polygon count behind those is, I mean, remember, that was in PlayStation 3 era graphics technology. We're on, obviously, we're on 4K level in terms of what computers are, are capable of. So just um, the exponential increase in the graphic quality behind everything, obviously the tracks is what we're going for, but it applies to everything. But right. the last thing I want to talk about before we get to your topic, Kyle, is, oh my God. What the hell was I just talking about? What was I just going on about before I got off track there? I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> I, I oh. blank so well. what is acceptable for a, um, a, a business model, if you will? Because obviously everyone wants, like, what, if you were Tony Gardner, Steve Myers, Kevin Bobbitt, whatever, and you could t tackle this issue of we need new content because new content pays the bills but we're in a never-ending spiral of getting outdated we are getting pressure from series um on getting this stuff updated we have viewers that want x y and z done we're trying to be ultimately i think the whole it all stems from i racing is trying to be an all-in-one simulator and want every possible kind of racing in there i mean look at rallycross was that a total waste of time i mean honestly it probably was yeah. But we're trying to do everything. We're trying to get this, that, this, X, Y, Z, whatever else. We have a small team, very long development times. We can't do it. How would you, as Tony Gardner, you're going in the office tomorrow morning, guys, old tracks, this is what we're going to do. Well, for me, I think right now, uh, it, it is a risk as a business, especially when you tout the level of accuracy. It's a risk to really change what they've done on newer tracks because obviously their newer stuff is absolutely incredible and really it just comes down to manpower. And I think honestly for me it's just an allocation of resources and manpower to things that can better benefit the Sims image as a whole. So Barcelona, we're getting that, that's a new thing that's coming, FIA grade one track, fantastic. Um, I don't know what else they got in the pipeline because they refuse to tell us anything about those kind Man, of things. And honestly, like five or six dirt tracks that are scanned, yeah. and we know dirt's still in single digits in content. Right, right. So, so obviously, you know that that kind of stuff is is coming. But I do think that you know we could probably scale back a little bit the new content and more, allocate more of the artists to going back and at the very least, you know, rescans will come. They, Tony Gardner said that in the forums in the past. They will come at the very, very, very least. Go back, redo some of the modeling, especially like the Armco at some of the older road tracks. It's just a 2D plane with an image yeah. texture on it. Give me a 3D model and replace that. Update the textures to higher resolution versions. That's the kind of stuff that, you know, is less time consuming than redoing the entire track, less expensive than redoing the entire track, but will elevate the sim as a whole uh, in a way that it's currently not at right now. So that's the allocation of resources is a big thing for me. Um, again, we know the rescans will come, but scale back, because we honestly, iRacing's track list is absolutely phenomenal. Um, if, if you're not looking at the age of the, of the content, you're just looking at the list of tracks yeah, that yeah. we have, it's, it's the, honestly, it's the best of any game or sim out there. For, I mean, even Forza's got less tracks than we do by a huge margin. Uh, Project Cars 2, Gran Turismo, all the, Assetto Corsa, all those other sims don't even come close to our track list. So we can scale back. We have Le Mans, we have Nürburgring, we have Daytona, Talladega, all the big stuff that we need. I think that we have, we're missing a couple Formula One circuits. Obviously those are big, but you know, we could scale back and focus more on the older stuff. Yeah. And, um, and just one more thing. And it goes to that topic of the age of the tracks. Think of just, think of the day to night model. We, back when these original tracks came out, and I know they've already confirmed, Tyler had to confirm they're working on this, 
Night racing back in the, I like to say, OG days of iRacing, it wasn't a thing. Night, Richmond Raceway was the first track to have night racing, and I want to say that was 09 or 2010. I think it was 09. So everything before Richmond and a lot of the stuff after even doesn't have night race, especially every road course minus like four of them. So uh, all of that, they have to go back and because of how their rendering is, especially back in the day with how they're like, you know, how the buildings are. Uh, for example, a building. Think of a building, you render a building, you have glass on all the four sides, like a press box. You put a light source in there. The light would naturally come through the building and illuminate the building and the exterior. That's not how iRacing worked back in the day, and it's not even how it works now, as far as I know. Literally, right. they have to go back to every grandstand is a off version and then a, night, a lights on version. They have to do that for right. every single building that they want illuminated and every single light pole. So that's, yeah, that's, a, that's a separate thing too, but it goes on the same thing of the tracks are so old and there are varying technologies that went into them, which is digging them in a further uh, development hole. Yeah, they're going to dig themselves into an even deeper hole because if they ever do get some, and, and honestly, I, I'm not, from my understanding of the day to night transition change, the shadows are not really dynamic in the way that a lot of other sims are. The shadows, and this is how Enter 2003 worked as well, because again, you know, as many as much as people say the code isn't, or it's it's nowhere even close to what Enter 2003 was, it still works basically the same. Where you on the ground, you have a shadow texture. That's how the shadows are done. Yeah. They're a shadow texture. As far as I know, and I, I know enough to, to feel pretty confident about that, um, what ends up happening is basically those shadows, each, you know, second or minute, however often they update it, that shadow texture changes and to a different pre-baked shadow layout, depending on, you know, how the sun is yeah, shining yeah. down. It's not like the sun is shining rays onto the track and it's casting shadows, the, the, you know, how you would dynamically expect it to. And the problem is, is that because they're using that, that old method of doing it, which works well right now, if they ever wanted to update it and do it the quote unquote right way, then they have to go do all of those old tracks, all 85 plus tracks. And that's a big project there as well. I'm not entirely sure, Kyle, if it still works that way. I know it did. Yeah, I don't know I, if it's do still, have, I don't think it still does on everything. They do have volumetric shadows as an yeah. option, but you can turn those off and it will still have shadows yeah. on the grandstands and tracks and that sort of thing. Because there are objects that aren't programmed or drawn a shadow which sometimes it looks kind of weird. And I know we've even noticed with the day to night model, there is a, and I think this goes back to the, uh, the lighting model and the, how it's programmed in at base level. The lights turn on, like graphically, you'll see the light rays and all the textures, the night light textures turn on, but there's no actual illumination for like another right. 20 minutes to a half hour. And I'm pretty well, sure that's even the caution lights, like the caution lights themselves, they don't cast light. Yeah, they're those just are, a texture. They're, yeah, the texture with blue. So, exactly. It's, it's the same. It, and to my understanding, that's how a lot of the lights work within iRacing. You know, not the car headlights and taillights, obviously. Actually, the taillights are actually an example of that because they don't cast a red glow either. Um, which at night they they do yeah. on the on, they would cast a glow on the track, but they don't because they're just a texture. Yeah, so just, that, that's a, that's a pretty global issue that they. Yeah, have. it's how iRacing just renders light sources individually. It seems it's just it's antiquated for the era, but we're not going to get everything into this. Uh, I do want to uh, bring up the topic of uh, Watkins Glen International Raceway, a track near and dear to Kyle and both geographically as well. Yeah. So I have everything that you have given me on this track, and I will let you start it off and cue me when you want to bring up the various things that we have about this track. Yeah, well, as long as they're in order, they I think should we be, should yes. be yeah, good. Should, um, yeah. So basically, the first image that we have here is an image of turn one at Watkins Glen uh, in the sim. And this is a great example of, and this is just in testing mode, so this isn't in quote-unquote race trim. But this is an image of what it looks like in testing, and you can see how empty this image looks. This is a very empty feeling. And there, there's no atmosphere here. Something I want to give too, and there's an issue with the day-night model with the sky horizon. Uh, the sky horizon, obviously, I mean, it's the horizon. But tracks that don't have a lot of rendered world, if you will, 
they have a big issue with that gray blankness. And because Watkins Glen being so old, they didn't render a lot of exterior stuff back in the day. You could see just in this picture how much of that emptiness is there because of yeah. how small the world was rendered. Yeah, and if you skip to the next image, this is a picture that I took at Watkins Glen in, I think this was 2016. Uh, let me just double check that real quick to confirm. Uh, this was, yeah, the picture was taken on August 5th, 2016. And you can see how much, you know, it's missing. And th again, this, there's two new grandstands here. The ones that are off in the, that were off in the distance before are now changed. Um, there's a, there are all, actually, there's three new grandstands in this corner. I, the, I'm actually sitting in one of the new ones. And look at the horizon. It's, it's, and obviously the horizon issue is one that they know exists and they're trying to fix that. But just how far out they really need to model to capture the essence of Watkins Glen, because it's in a very mountainous yeah. region. And it's, it's not captured in the current, in the current version. Nope. And next, it looks like we are headed up the S's. Yep. So this is uh, this is an example of uh, really where textural changes could mean a lot. If you take a look, uh, this is again an example of the 2D image issue uh, that you know I have a problem with because the Armco at Watkins Glen is its signature feature, and that's kind of what everyone knows it for. And you know, back in 2008, the resources were only really there to plant an image on a you know a box of sorts stretch it out and there's your wall yep and here's yeah you can see obviously with the full support all the supports behind it and obviously we are working on the repave to add uh insult to injury right and, and also if you notice the curbs changing as well uh, in the the eye racing one the curbs are painted white and they actually stop quite short and then they have the black and white striped that are much taller so not only are they painted but the profile has changed and actually the old ones were ripped out and completely reinstalled so uh that's a big change going up the s's because those tall curbs in the old version would throw your car off the racing line and they don't do that anymore because they're just fia you know standard yeah. plate curbs Next, we are we have a chopper view uh, at the end of the bus stop, looking back towards the back straightaway. The bus stop is one of the single most important corners around this entire place, and you'll notice right away uh, the curbs there are extremely narrow, and they have not been this narrow since 2008. And actually, the one that's on the bottom of the screen has, and you'll see in a moment when you switch over to the Google Earth <laughs> image, it's been widened about five to six times, um, which hugely changes the line that you take through these corners because obviously the bus stop in stock cars you're hopping curbs as much as you yeah. possibly can so you know when you when you have curbs that are this narrow you can't utilize the track you can't drive the track the same way so when people tell me oh it's just the curbs they got painted no no they're they're totally different now and and uh, it's there's a significant difference in how you attack these corners which you'll see in a little bit uh, with the comparison video. Yeah, you can definitely see that. And uh, obviously, as I think you may have already said, and I wasn't fully paying attention to all the runoff we still have as yep. we scroll back. We have all the sand, all the grass, and obviously at Per Watkins Glen, the pave. And then, um, let's see, we skip next. I have another picture of the Armco. Yep, so this is this is another good example, uh, not only of the, the 2D texturing method, but also just look at the color grading between the iRacing screenshot and the real picture. Uh, the color difference is is huge and it's honestly it, it, at this point even just changing the color of the armco would be a, a big i know change. back in the and i think spa was the first track at spa uh there's a couple things there i wanted to grab but i didn't Spa was uh came out 2010 and that was the first track they used uh, some kind of light calibration method and that helps uh, preserve the colors in more detail uh true to what they should be and the iRacing at the time Obviously, that wasn't a thing at Watkins Club. But one thing I want to point out is just look how, and I'll use the word pathetic, look at the grass on the iRacing version. It is just literally, it looks like just generic AstroTurf. Yeah. And then you just have the wall with the, you can see the weeds just kind of baked into the image. And it, yeah. Again, are you going to notice that driving? Of course not. But all it takes is a scenic shot during a broadcast. You see that three or four times, three or four different examples of this stuff. And you're like, wow, that's like, that looks pathetic. Yeah, and you can just kind of scroll through these next couple uh, at a yeah. reasonably slow pace. But uh, one of the things is, the reason why I bring up Watkins Glen, I am biased, obviously. But there is some facts to back me up as to why this this is in one of the greatest priorities that needs to happen soon. Because Watkins Glen is factually, there's data to support this, the most purchased road track in iRacing. Uh, it's the most used purchase track in iRacing. 
Um, it, it's not Spa, it's not Le Mans, it's not the Nürburgring, it's not Imola, it's not Monza, and, it's Watkins And that Glen. is to road or is that an overall statement? That That's to road, but yeah. it's also crosses over to the oval side of things because the, all the stock car yeah. schedules uses it, use it. And you know, it's on the peak broadcast every other year and it, it's, it's, it's really, really, really showing its age now. And this image, uh... I'm gonna. I know you said scroll through it, but this is of turn ten. Uh, it will depend. It, people name corners of Watkins yeah. Glen so differently. It's the it's the left, the second to last left hander, the second to last corner on this cup configuration. Well, just overall, actually, and you can see just look at how low res everything looks. Like some of the the stuff in the background is actually reminiscent of uh, Nintendo 64, and I'm not even yeah. exaggerating that. In all honesty, we yeah, have the and, gravel and traps, the trees, yeah, and then and it, uh, go to the new version. The, go, go ahead, Kyle. Yeah. I was gonna say the grandstands. I mean that yeah. those grandstands have been there since about 2013. So they, they took a little more. You know, that's a little bit more forgivable than the rest of the track state. But uh, actually, is that even right? Yeah, I think that's might might have been a year or two earlier than that. But it's the grandstands are such a huge visual factor that fill mm. your vision. They're enormous when you go to the racetrack, and they're just completely. They're at least absent. 2012. Come to think, because I remember watching one of those. Uh, I think it was the Kyle Busch. Oh, Marcus uh, battle. Ambrose. Oh, the Kyle Busch battle where the, there was all the oil on the track. Yeah, at the 2012. end. And, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw them there in the background. And then yeah, this so is, that's. Uh, I think yeah. this is one of the last ones. This is of the back straightaway, and you get to see uh, again the difference and look at just the background scenery of off track. It's just so low res compared to everything else. And then this Kyle, right. I'm going to leave this one up for a little bit. And this is the last one in this set. Uh, you went in and took a kind of a shadowed image and all the major changes that are different compared to what we have now. Yeah, so this is this is a perfect example of when people, uh, you know, I've, I've made brought this racetrack up in the forum so many times and everyone always tells me that it hasn't really changed, they just repaved the place. And I went back and painstakingly this afternoon, uh, went back and, and highlighted all the major changes. This is not to just the objects, this is to the surface of the racetrack. All the blue that you see are all massive visual indicators in the Grand Sense. The dark blue is all the new Grand Sense. So that is, they're, they're ones that fill your vision when you climb up the S's. There's one at the top of the hill there that's there in iRacing, but about a quarter of the size that it is now. Heading down turn one, there's the uh, one that's straight off, right off the runoff area there. That's an enormous Grand Sense. It's like 70, 80 feet tall. That is just completely absent from iRacing's version. So ignoring the Grand Sense, let's move to the curbing. When they re did the repave in 2016, they ripped up all the curbing in the S's, redid all of that. They extended the curb in turn one. All the curbs in the bus stop got completely ripped out and replaced with much taller, much more aggressive curbing. The exit of the carousel got uh, paved with a bunch of runoff. They added a really long curb there uh, as well. You see that, you know, that's stereotypical NASCAR running super, super wide out of there. Uh, the boot version got some attention as well. All the black and white tall curbs that used to exist down in the boot have all been replaced with FIA standard curbs. And uh, so that's, you know, that changes how you race the track because now you can actually use those curbs. You don't just bounce off of them. Turn eight in the boot, uh, the heel, as they would call it, got a big runoff change as well as some new curbing. Uh, rejoining the NASCAR circuit also got new curbing. Turns uh, 10 or six or whatever you want to call it, as you mentioned, also new runoff area, uh, as well as turn 11 or turn seven, however you want to call it, new curbing there as well. The other thing, the walls, um, the green is highlighted. Uh, that is where walls were added or changed. Uh, we'll start over in turn one at the far left of your screen. When they repaved the track after 2011, uh, after Rudiman's crash there, that was so violent, yeah, they yes. moved the wall back about 10 feet and paved every, all the grass that was next to it. So that opens up that whole area uh, and kind of reduces the funnel effect that you get. We'll go around all the way to the carousel now. And that wall got moved after the 2009 crash with Sam Hornish Jr., uh, Jeff Gordon, and Casey Kane. Uh, that was just a safety feature. They moved that wall there as well. And, and now that the runoff area is there, it's not, a, you know, it's a, kind of a, become a safety issue again lately. But again, all that runoff is used by NASCAR. Uh, move over to the final corner, the bottom of your screen. There's a safer barrier there now. Yep. That's tire barrier. That tire barrier has not existed since 2010. Uh, so it's been quite some time uh, since that, you know, that has been in place. So this, this is probably the perfect racetrack to show you. Again, this is the most popular paid road track in iRacing. It has had so many updates that, and honestly, we've gotten a lot of rescans for a lot less. Michigan and Pocono, you know, for example. 
uh, that basically got a surface change and some walls moved around. Yeah. This is twice as, and, ex as extensive. And going to um, just the point of in the laser scan accuracy, a driving tool or well, a tool for, you know, drivers. I know a lot of the, the younger drivers these days, which I mean, most everyone is young. Oh, I'm going to boot up iRacing to help me go out to the Glen. And a lot of these landmarks, that's what they talk about. Well, I'll, hey, this is right here. It tells me where to break. When you have, like you said, these major grandstands, all these signs down, whether a grandstand has been erected or taken down, that changes your reference points. And obviously curbs, if you're taking all this extra curb, you come off the carousel, you're taking all that extra room. You can't do that. That invalidates iRacing as the ultimate training tool. And I know Chevy, and I know all the manufacturers, the team, they have their own proprietary software for simulators, and they can use that, and it'll be better for iRacing, and that loses that whole advertising campaign, along with maybe them even using a set of course of Project Cars. I mean, yeah. Well, actually, Parker Kligerman uh, was down at Watkins Glen uh, in August. To He ran, I, I don't know if it was the Cup race or the Xfinity race down there, but he tweeted that he was using iRacing to practice for that weekend, and I was cringing because I know that he knows. You know, he how, has to say that because he probably has a deal with them. Well, it, it's not even that. It's just he. I, I'm sure he knows how old well, the scan yeah, is. And you, were you just around, Carl, when um, a couple of years ago Tony Stewart had some special event at Pocono? I think so. Yeah. yeah, there was a special event. Tony Stewart was in it. It was Cup Cars at Pocono. This is before the repave, so we were on the old one. And it was right before the real Pocono race. And someone asked, oh, Tony, does this teach you blah, blah, blah? And I think he tried. I don't remember exactly what he said, but he pretty much said it as nicely as he could. Well, I mean, it's a different version. I mean, it's still Pocono, but it's not going to really help me that much. Because, right. well, again, these repaves are big. So uh, the last kind of bit of content I have on Watkins Glen, Kyle, you actually put this on SimTV's page. Um, yep. This is a side by side, and it'll be quiet for. Is there audio behind it? Oh, there is. You don't have. It's really. It's not that important. All you right, can so, mute it if you want. Oh well, in that case, then uh, <laughs> I'll mute it. But um, it is a side-by-side -side lap. I can't quite tell what car you're in. I think it's some kind of GT3 car. Yeah, so I, I chose the... I was trying to find cars that were relatively similar between the Sims, and I don't have a lot of content for Assetto Corsa. Uh, so it's the... For iRacing, it's the Ferrari 488 GT3, and for Assetto Corsa, it's the 458 GT2. So that's as close as I can do. Yeah, we're um, turn one now, and you can see the grandstands on both sides, absent on iRacing, the huge orange curves. So the runoff, it's kind of accurate, but iRacing ends a lot earlier. We're heading up the S's, iRacing's on the old concrete patch that went in there back in the late 90s. But the S's, to be honest, it doesn't look Not too that bad. bad. Not too bad. That's, that's a perfect example of why I think a lot of people, you know, from the driver's perspective, it doesn't look that bad. But you get down to the bus stop, and, yep. you know, it changes Look at how much curve you can take, especially on the exit. All that curve you can take, it's a lot smoother, obviously. And again, you, and you put this right in the video, Kyle. You can put the carousel right here. Look at all the runoff here. And you can see you don't. You, there's no barrier except the actual barrier there. Right. But, and, uh, in the iRacing version, you have to you have to constrain yourself from unwinding the wheel because of the grass on that. And then here we come. Grandstand and turn. Whatever it is, the left-hander. Grandstand here. All the runoff on the left. To the, and there's the safer barrier, which takes away some room on exit, and that is a lap. Yeah, so, and, and again, from the driver's perspective, it's not quite as bad, but you can see very quickly there are different lines that I took, especially through the bus stop and through turn, I'm going to call it turn six because that's how the most of the TV announcers call it. Now, the, the penultimate corner, uh, the lines change there because you don't have to unwind as late. You can unwind earlier, you can track out wide on corner exit, and... And it changes how you drive the racetrack. And honestly, if I wasn't in a car that was, I, I actually don't know in terms of the speed, the relative speed between the GT3 and GT2, which one was supposed to be faster. But in identical cars, the new track is is significantly faster. Not just because of the, the stickier pavement, but because you can use so much more of the racetrack. And, and the one thing, and what we're gonna start wrapping this up here. Um... You said you wrote specifically in the video that was not a laser scanned version of a Santa Corsa, I, and that was actually a little bit wrong. Um, it, it's it is scanned, but it's a lidar scan, so it's not super accurate. Yeah, it's um, more it's, of a uh, is it a kind of a a riding scanner, if you will, a driving uh, scanner? I know yeah, that is a it, thing it, on some. It's more for elevation than it is for the individual bumps and grooves. So yeah, it's not the most accurate, and that's the. But my point isn't to make, you know, say a Seto Corsa's version is 
far superior or a set of course is a better sim i'm not saying any of that i'm just trying to show people the differences between a track that is up to date and one that is very very far out of and date. kind of to spin this around and kind of be our last discussion point of the night and if anybody in chat has a specific question you want our opinion on let, let us know now um is the late and this is not going to change this is just kind of a driver to driver broadcaster to broadcaster thing is the laser scan everything that it's made out to be is it as important as it may have been 10 years ago when iRacing came out with it and it wasn't a thing 10 years ago and it was huge is it now that we see what can be done on lower fidelity data is it what it is touted to be is it as important as it may have come off to be yes and no it's it's a complicated answer there because I, I think there's a lot of sims and games that are using laser scanning as the new standard um and the problem is is that iRacing does not have the budgets to to compete with um you know turn 10 studios in you know all the other groups that do project cars and a set of corsa and all that stuff they don't have the same budget but it I, I the laser scanning is the standard for track creating in 2019. the problem becomes you know if you're going to tout a laser scan it needs to be you know the reason the reason for the laser scan is to be accurate and if it's 15 years old it's accurate to a 15 year old version of the track but it's not accurate to now and that's a very clear issue that if you're going to, to be the, you know, if you're going to tout millimeter accuracy or, you know, even 30 centimeter accuracy, it needs to be that. It needs to just, it needs to be at least somewhat close to the current version of the track. And I think that's where iRacing is going to lose out. It's because they have such a smaller audience. They don't have the ability to go out and redo tracks every five years. And, and again, their, their track list is five times what Asado Corsa comes with out of the box. Um, but laser scanning is the, it's the base level. I think it's what people expect now. Even, I think even Forza, uh, yeah. Forza's version of Watkins Glen is laser scanned and it's a newer scan than iRacing is. So I, I know Evan and I have a black PTR TV. We, we have project cars and we, we do play time to time. We, we went to Texas Motor Speedway and there's no way it's laser scan. That was literally yeah. the worst rendition yeah. of Texas ever. I literally there was like an uphill in turn one or something like that. I'm like, and it was literally goes from like zero degrees of banking to 24. And there's no trend. Like I, I don't know how that got out. But laser yeah. scanning is important. And as you said, to wrap this up, what we're saying, and I, I think I speak on both of our behalf. We are both avid iRacers, both as drivers and both as iRacing ambassadors. Myself being on the eSports network. Drew, don't kill me if you see this. You know I love <laughs> iRacing, but this is not something that, and I said in my post earlier, this is not something that is just a, well, we need more content, we need this, we need that, so whatever, we have it, it's fine, it's good enough. No one notices this. This is a fundamental flaw in how they have run this business. And it is becoming far and far more noticed overall by not even just racers, not even fans. It's becoming known by the actual sanctions and the facilities themselves. Yeah. When yeah. iRacing does not have, as you said, does not have the means to go out and start from scratch. iRacing can't come out with an iRacing 2. It'll literally take till 2037. Yeah. iRacing can't do that. They are in a box. We have all of this content over the past 13, 14 years, even before we open launched. It's some of it's really good. Everything I'd say oh, past 2013, perfectly Fantastic. fine. Fantastic. Everything before 2011 to 2013. Not it's, so fine. It, no, 2011 to 2013 stuff is passable. That's where a lot yeah. of the shorter tracks were, like uh, the Southern National, stuff like that, Lucas Oil. But everything 2010 earlier whether it looks decent or not it what do you do with it and we don't have the answers we have some answers but that also goes against fundamental kind of marketing terms i racing has gone with if you're up updating daytona bits and pieces you've lost some of your validity your accuracy but it also makes the track look better in the end 
So what are you going for? We don't have the answers. We have the thoughts. This is a fundamental problem. It needs fundamental attention. It needs to become to light. iRaising needs to come out and make a statement saying, we get it. We can't do this. This is what we're going to do. And they need to go and actually go, in my opinion, go out there to the masses and say, this is what we're going to do about this problem. We're not going to go out and say that our tracks are 100% laser scanned because obviously we have to fudge some stuff. We have laser scan surfaces of the era. Everything else is going to be based on art. Go set a tone and go out there and achieve it because right now we don't have an answer. We don't have a solid concrete path of what they want to do with this. We know they want to update it. We know they want to rescan it. But then we see what they're doing with Atona, where they're doing bits and pieces, and it convolutes that. They need to come out there and just make a statement. We know, we know, we know this is what we're going to do about it. I agree. I think that sums it up pretty nicely there. So I uh, want to thank this chat was pretty much broadcasters, PS PSI <laughs> TV in uh, Racers, uh, no, R RLBN. I know both of you by name, but I'm going to leave you guys with your privacy. But hi to both of you. Thanks for uh, being in this. Uh, hopefully this gets out to the right people. Might get out to the wrong people. Uh, to share, like, subscribe. We love doing these. I've had a lot of different guests in the past on these. Kyle's this is the second one he's been on. So we love doing these. Love topics for the future. Let me know. Corey at Primetime Racing TV. Primetime Racing TV. Uh, we just redid the website. We're looking for more broadcasts. So again, please uh, send them our way. So Kyle, Sim TV, you guys are doing phenomenal over there. You beat us in broadcasting subs because you guys have been putting out a lot more content because we had to shut Whew. down a little bit. You guys are <laughs> kicking ass. Keep it up. I would, like I said, I would give you my spot on the esports network, but I know you don't want it. That's a topic for a different day. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it uh, is. Andrew! He just said, say my name. So. <laughs> so, any final thoughts regarding absolutely anything, Kyle, topic or not? Well, I do know that there are some David Tucker is in the works doing some camera adjustments in terms of camera tools that I bet you're not quite aware of yet. Nope. Um, so uh, he's working. This is from Drew Adamson last night. Are you and allowed to say no, this in the public? Uh, yeah. I mean, if he told it to me, it's fine. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, basically, I think what he said that David's working on a tool uh, like a point to point camera that you can basically track subjects along a curve. Um, so that's uh, a no drone timeline. cam, a rail cam, something yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, no, no timeline, but that's uh, that's that's something fun. So they are doing some things that we are requesting, which is very cool. Yeah. So that and listening to the fans, listening to especially the broadcasters, which are out there and being ambassadors for the product, whether whether directly or indirectly. So that is episode nine. Uh, of course, we ran long, but uh, this is a topic we really wanted to get out there. So. Hope uh, who viewed it did enjoy it. Have a great night, everyone, and we'll catch you next time.